All right, hello and welcome again to uh, my garage. Uh, what I got here is a uh, 2005 AW5551 SN. It's out of a uh, 2005 Nissan Maxima. And I know uh, you guys will probably were waiting for this video to, uh, to show up. Uh, so we're gonna do a teardown inspection and see what's going on with this unit. And like uh, always, so we're gonna remove everything from the outside. Here we have uh, the servo, the band servo, and here we have the band anchor. Now a, a common mistake uh, that I see very often is that uh, whenever uh, they get a reman unit, they take this big uh, bolt out uh, to fill it up with fluid, which is the band anchor. You put the uh, band anchor back on and uh, you won't have reverse and you won't have a fourth gear and a third gear. Uh, you will be missing gears because the, the band will be mispositioned. Okay, so as, as we do always, we take everything from the outside. We're going to have to take, uh, remove our pan to disconnect our wiring harness so we can get the whole harness out and then we're going to go ahead and tear the rest of the unit out. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started here. We're going to go ahead and remove the linkage. It's a 12 millimeter bolt. Okay, we get our linkage arm out of the way. One bolt. 17. We have another 12 over here. Now here, we want to separate the uh, the transmission range sensor from the wiring harness that goes inside of the transmission. Keep them separate. So we're going to try and remove this. It's a little bit bent, but it's fine. It's not broke. Okay, so uh, we separate it from the harness. We remove it and let's put this inside. So here we have our main uh, solenoid uh, harness. Now what we're going to do, we're going to flip it over a little bit, slightly, and we're going to go ahead and remove the pan, disconnect the harness from uh, the valve body, from the solenoids, and then we remove our harness. So we're going to use a Torx 40, a T40, to remove the pan bolts. This is actually called a valve body cover. There is no filter here. The filter is internal. The filter cannot be changed unless you disassemble the whole transmission. issue with my socket here. Just bear with me. cover is attached with silicone from the factory. You just want to break that loose a little bit. And we're going to move our pan here. This is our pan with just the valve body cover. Now we disconnect our linear solenoid. This is the uh, uh, lockup solenoid. This is our pressure control solenoid. And this is our shift pressure control solenoid. And these are our on-off solenoids. The main issue with this transmission uh, is these three big solenoids here that they wear and they have uh, two bushings inside here on, on the uh, armature, the pintle, the little needle that pushes the valve. There's a valve in the, on the front of the solenoids on the snout and uh, the pintle tends to stick 
with debris. Uh, this solenoid creates a magnetic field and all this uh, that you see here, uh, it's kind of shiny black. Uh, it makes its way inside the solenoid and then it starts sticking. That's, the, that's a very common issue with these units. Go ahead and uh, now these transmissions are getting older and as you see here the connectors are very brittle and the tips are going to break a little bit which is normal for a high mileage transmission. When I say high mileage we're talking about almost 100,000 miles or a little bit over 100,000 miles. Now the linear solenoids, I'm using a 45 uh, uh, bit, angle bit. I'm just going to get just enough in here so that I can get behind it and with the tip, uh, without breaking the connector of the solenoids, to, uh, manage to disconnect them. So actually what you're doing here, you just uh, get in the, the tip of the pick in here and then kind of uh, pry a little bit upwards without breaking it so that you can get uh, this unlatched from the solenoid and so we can remove it. Now here we have our uh, transmission temperature sensor here and we're going to remove this bolt so that we can get access to that wire harness to get it out of the way. Now I do have a separate video on this uh, valve body and uh, solenoid repair. Just go to my channel and uh, look for AW55 uh, Transgo Shift Kit installation. And I show you uh, how to open this uh, solenoids and what needs to be done to repair them. So now we just wiggle this harness here. Just guide it through the hole, we get it out of the way. The reason you want to do this now, uh, in, instead of getting in there and uh, try to disassemble the whole unit, once you start uh, manhandling this transmission, you're going to end up breaking this connector here. And if you do that, you're going to end up buying a, a harness connector, which is not uh, readily available. You're going to have to get it from another used unit, which whoever has a unit, they don't want to sell you, you know, just a wire and harness. They don't want to sell you more than that. Okay, let's go ahead and remove that. 12 millimeter. So now we have our harness completely removed. We get that out of the way. Now we're going to remove our uh, speed sensors here. This is our input speed sensor, and it's our input speed sensor because this drum, the input drum, goes all the way through and it sits behind over here in this way. And uh, this sensor reads the outer uh, uh, steel lugs from the drum. I'll show you one once we get it disassembled. So this would be the input speed sensor. They're both the same, exactly the same. You don't have to mark them. They can go either way. So this is the input or turbine speed sensor. And this is the output speed sensor. And this actually reads uh, the final drive gear. There we go. See these two speed sensors are exactly the same, they are identical. Now let's put our bolt in there just to see if we won't lose it. Okay, now that we have the harness removed, let's go ahead and uh, remove the valve body and lay it aside out of the way. And we're just going to get the 10 millimeter bolts right here on both sides. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get this out of the way so we can remove this one bolt. Okay, so 
Here we go. Now, before I take this valve body off, I know that a lot of you guys have been replacing valve bodies on this, uh, on this Maximus or Volvos, uh, Chevy Equinoxes, uh, Pontiac Torrents, uh, there's a uh, Saturn Views, Saturn Ions, uh, this transmission comes in a variation of vehicles. Whenever you remove this valve body, there are two seals in between the valve body and the case. One is for lubrication and the other one is for the low reverse clutch circuit. And here we have both seals. Uh, if you happen to miss one of these seals, especially this one here, which is the low reverse clutch circuit, it compresses the low reverse frictions. You're going to have no reverse and you're not going to have no uh, first engine braking, manual low engine braking, and uh, it's probably going to uh, slip going forward. So you just remove those two little seals. This is what they look like. Set them out of the way. Now we have our valve body out of the way. Uh, we're going to go ahead and remove, we're going to start from the rear and then we're going to flip it over and get everything from the front. We'll go ahead and flip this transmission over. I'm going to get this uh, servo out, out of the way. And this servo is different from the Saturn's and is different from the uh, Volvos, this servo here actually has an accumulator built in it. And the reason for that accumulator is uh, for a smoother uh, band apply. The accumulator's in here and it has a, uh, a spring in there. I'm going to set this to the side. So this is what it looks like, the servo and the return spring. We're going to get this bracket here out of the way. 14. Set that aside. Now we're going to remove all these 12 uh, millimeter bolts. Pay attention to where this uh, uh, stud goes. Uh, it's a 12 millimeter. This is your ground. There's a bracket that, come, that goes in here. And is your ground battery cable. Just pay attention where it goes. You can tell that this transmission has never been opened. It has Loctite on all of the bolts. Once you fix the issues, I mean, this is a very good unit. I mean, it lasts, I mean, uh, original life is less than 100,000. But once you get it repaired, it lasts a little longer. I know there's uh, people say out there that uh, most of the problems is just valve body issues. Most of them they are, but there's some that they're not. So let's find out and see what are we gonna find here on this one. Okay, so we remove the end cover. And as you see, I mean the blue is very dark. We have more seals, we have five of them here on the case. That's two, that's three, that's four. And this is five, five seals, just like the ones in the in between the valve body and the case. Set them together. Now, whenever you take this uh, snap ring off, just pay attention where this lug goes. It just actually goes on this side. Just mark it with a cross, and the flat side goes up, and the uh, the indentation goes to the opposite end. Let me show you what I'm talking about. 
Okay, so we removed this uh, snap ring. There's a smooth side to it. And then on the opposite side, there is a notch. The notch goes towards the pressure plate. So this is the pressure plate. This is a one, two, and reverse frictions. Now, see this friction here? It's still brown on one side and it's black on the other. This is the two, one, and reverse friction. Remember what I say that a lot of people say that it's just a valve body problem? Well, it's not. All right, so let's continue disassembling, disassembling this unit. Here we have a bearing race. We'll get that out of the way. We have uh, three ceiling rings here. Uh, this is the apply piston. This is the return spring for one, two, and reverse. And uh, this is an accumulator piston for this uh, uh, one, two, and reverse clutch. Set that aside. The turbine speed sensor or the input speed sensor reads the lugs on this drum here. Here's the hole where the input speed sensor goes, and this is where uh, where it reads it. Let's get this drum out, and this goes all the way to the other side of the case. Now this is first clutch or forward, and then on the bottom here is uh, direct drum. So you have a, a dual drum here, you have two pistons in it, and you have two clutch packs. We get the forward frictions out of the way, outside from the drum, and first gear looks like it's in, uh, in fair shape, not all that good, but it's fair. We get this bearing, we already got one raise from the end cover. And then this bearing, and then there's another race in here. Now we get the uh, direct frictions out from the drum. Same thing here. They're a little bit burnt, like the one, two, and reverse. So you're going to need this friction plate here. We set them. Aside, here is a bearing. This bearing goes here. It is very common for these transmissions that the bushings, they wear out. So you have to replace the whole bushings. Now let me get a little bit closer here so you can see what this uh, bushing looks like. I don't know if you can see it from there, but you can see a little bit of wear. And this bushing actually looks uh, better than the one on the opposite end. Okay, so go ahead and put this in here. We'll get this uh, ring gear. This planet here, it's in good shape. This bushing likes to spin. Uh, before this bushing was not available, you had to send this the whole planet to an Omega machine. But now the bushing is available, you can replace it. It is replaceable. So it is available now. Now we get our uh, low reverse frictions. If you see, this is the apply uh, circuit for the low reverse frictions. We're going to go ahead and remove the low reverse frictions out of the case. So you just pull the ring gear out. And these are our low reverse. These are in very good shape. There's nothing wrong with these frictions. But they come in the kit. So, if they come in the kit, go ahead and replace it. Okay? So this is basically everything on this side of the, of the case. We have the low reverse piston here. Get the snap ring out and the return spring. And with, with some pliers, just pull it up out of the case. Here we go. Now we get the one, two, and reverse. Ring, uh, ring gear and planet. There is a planetary gear in there. 
our band drum. These are the four or five frictions, and yep. Yeah, they are pretty bad. Very, very far out. Go ahead and get this snap ring here out of the way. So this transmission here was actually slipping in fourth gear with some major damage. We're actually going to need some hard parts because uh, this part here is actually part of the final drive air assembly. So see, these frictions here don't even want to come out. This piece is actually broke from the other one. Once I flip this transmission over and uh, take the bell housing off and take, uh, remove everything from the opposite end, see these frictions here? This is not a valve body issue. I'm just stressing that point because uh, I heard a lot of uh, comments, especially online, and uh, people are ordering valve bodies from everywhere, eBay or wherever they can find them like crazy. And uh, they put them on and uh, transmission doesn't work. And it doesn't work because you probably already have damage inside of the transmission. Now this is the, the band or the B4 band and it's burned up. The center looks uh, a little bit you know kind of good but if you look at the two edges here all the way around this transmit this uh, band here was slipping the band is no good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, flip this thing over so that we can get uh, that assembly that I'm talking about remove it out of the way And then I'm going to put the camera on pause and then I'm going to show you. I got one from a Chevy Equinox. It might be the same, it might, be, it might not be. But we're going to go ahead and compare the two. Go ahead and remove the bell housing. very frequently all right so we already got our uh, bell housing bolts all removed give it a couple of taps and it comes right out simple. Okay. So this is our bell housing. This is the inside of our bell housing. Now behind this cover there are some magnets that catches, uh, they're very small. They catch the debris, part of the debris, 
more more like uh, what you, what you see on a transmission pan. See those magnets? This is uh, you know quite a bit of trash for the magnets here. Go ahead and get this out of the way. Okay, this is our differential, and uh, this is the transfer gear, and it has a hub on the opposite end, the one that broke. Uh, this is our front pump, and this is our filter here. As you can see, you cannot replace it, you know, like a regular rear-wheel drive, uh, for example, 4L60E. You just pull the pan off, remove the filter, and put a new one, and you're good to go. There's no such thing on, on uh, this typical unit or like a Honda unit either. You cannot replace the filter. Just get the pump out of the way. Yep, it just comes right out. And you have uh, two more sets of frictions on the pump itself. Let's go ahead and inspect those two uh, sets, see what they look like. There was one unit one time that uh, these lugs right here that hold uh, these frictions, they were actually broke off. The driver that was driving the vehicle or the owner of the vehicle kept driving it uh, with it uh, shifting real hard. Harsh up shifts and down shifts. This friction is looking pretty good. Set them to the side. This friction is also slip a little bit, so you will see some heat marks on the steel plates. Go ahead and take them off, remove them. And they're not too bad. I mean, they, they don't look too good either. And then you have the pump gears in here. I'm going to set this to the side and then I'm going to go ahead and, uh, okay, so we have a sprag here. If you hold it on this end, clockwise and locks counterclockwise. Go ahead and uh, put this washer back on here. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, get our uh, feet pipe that feeds our servo, remove it out of the way. We're going to get the linkage out of the way so we can get uh, this uh, transfer gear and remove it and inspect it. Let's take our differential and remove it. Set it to the side. Let's get this cover off. Sometimes you will see the case will be damaged right here where this uh, gear is at. That transfer gear. Put the little bracket here and the two bolts. Let's go ahead and pry on this feed pipe. And this feed, feed pipe has uh, two O-rings. You have one O-ring here and then you have another one over here. Get that out of the way. Okay, sorry about that. My camera just uh, stopped for some apparent reason. Okay, so we were talking about the detent roller here. So uh, in order to get it out, you just push this out of the way. And then we get the uh, detent roller out. Here's our detent roller. We get our parking pawl. This is our parking pawl. P A W L. Not pawl like uh, my neighbor. This is actually getting in the way a little bit. We just go ahead and remove this uh, parking rod. The rooster comb assembly. 
Now we can get the parking pole out of the way and the parking pole guide. Now we want to remove this uh, little, uh, another guide here because this will fall in the machine once you're washing it. So we've got to remove that, be careful not to lose it. All right. Bearing, roller bearing and a needle bearing and the raise. Let's get those out of the way. And if you see this planet here, this is the one that's missing the little hub. Let's go ahead and remove the filter now. So that I can flip this transmission over and uh, get this uh, transfer gear here out of the way so that uh, we can inspect the case to see if it has a wear. Okay, so we get our snap ring pliers. Sometimes it will uh, give us a little bit of a hard time trying to get it out. Yep, it's worn out. It is worn. See, you'll have uh, issues getting it out because uh, there is a groove. where the uh, snap ring or the, the, the gear has been uh, wobbling back and forth. We're going to try and get this uh, snap ring, remove it, get this out of the way. I want you guys to see the actual wear. this for the camera so you guys can see but I think it's gonna be easier for me if I just uh, get this thing out. Good get a little bit stubborn. again. I can see that it's going to give me a little bit of trouble. not complying, but it will. All right. Come here, buddy. There's a big old groove on there. I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera and uh, work on this thing and I'll get back to you guys. Okay, so we managed to get the snap ring out and here's our transfer gear. And this is where the snap ring goes. Right here. This is the case and this is what I was talking to you about. The wear right here. It has a big step right here it's like a half moon it's smooth right here and then you have the side loading right about here and actually the the gear will be uh, flexing this way it's nice on the, on the top end there is nowhere you can see a little bit of shiny but like like you see there there's the wear all right well, coming back to this, 
This thing just snapped off, man. Look at this. If you see that, this is off of a Chevy Equinox. And it's actually the same. You have some ID grooves. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four ID grooves. Well, you have one over here and you have three here. So it's a little different. But this, uh, this gear here, it's actually the same. But this is what I'm talking about here. See, this is a uh, tack welded. He has a five uh, long tacks here. Did you see there? And this hub right here just snapped off from the from here. So the, that's this is the four uh, four fire frictions. So he uh, had no fourth gear. He had no fifth gear. It would actually neutralize. So there we have it. Um, I know a lot of people say that. Uh, AW5550s 50s and AW5551 50 SNs. Uh, just throw a valve body on it and it will fix it. There's our valve body. And this is not the case. Some of the units, it is not possible. And if you throw a valve body in it and if it doesn't, wor if it doesn't work or if it doesn't fix your problem, then more than likely you're going to have some damage. Usually what I see is a 4 or 5 clutch is burnt, you know, like you see here. But I, this is the first time I've seen one of this snap like that. The case where you actually see that very often, you just replace this uh, half with another go uh, known good use one. This band also likes to burn up. I mean, it is very common that the band burns. Uh, I never see an issue with the pump itself, but there was one instance that this lugs right here, they hold the snap and they were just uh, broke off. It was just uh, popped off. So there we have it, aw 5551 sn AW100, which would make it 2005 model year, 8Y000, it's a 2004 only. There are differences in the case, but here we have it. Alright guys, enjoy, and click on the link, I'm gonna, I don't know where I'm going to put it here, but subscribe here, and uh, that will take you to my channel, browse through all my videos, and uh, like always, click, click like and subscribe and share it on your social uh, networks and do whatever you want with these videos. I make these videos for you guys. Enjoy. Thanks for watching.